Well, everything is the answer to that question. Everything is exactly what a person in my seat would want. A great ownership group, a great fan base, the ability to start new with a new coach. All of those things were so appealing to, to me that really going through this process, it was very clear to me at a very early time, right when I met with Josh, this is where I wanted to be. Yeah, Adam's a winner. He's won everywhere he's been. Uh, first in Boston, then in obviously Denver, then in San Francisco. Uh, and he's learned from a lot of great leaders. Uh, he's about excellence. He's about attracting the best people uh, and then holding them accountable. He's about building edges. Um, he's inclusive. He wants people from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different perspectives. And so it was a pretty easy decision from my point of view in terms of how we do it. Uh, both of us work super hard. Both of us want to do things from the ground up, one person at a time. But both of us want to take more of a long-term perspective to build sustainable and elite winning. Uh, and so uh, I think uh, you know he was he was an ideal candidate from my point of view. Big man, I, I, every time Josh Harris talks, and he's talked to the media more in two weeks than Dan did <laughs> yes. in the previous twenty years. Um, but every time Josh Harris talks, I start to see he kind of sense the vision he has to build this thing and but what what did Tanner teach us right talk is cheap what do they actually do and, and I think it's so remarkable that it was January 8th is when Harris fired Ron like that was only January 8th within a week he got the top GM candidate on the market and when Peter says I want to be here there's so much to build here I believe in this organization I believe in these owners like Washington as destination, the Washington professional football organization as a destination is so mind blowing and exciting. And it, it we got to get used to sitting at the cool kid table again as like a collective group. I mean, yeah, we grew up as fans of this team and watched this team win Super Bowls in the, you know, 80s and 90s. And, you know, this team was on top. And, but for the 20 years that we've been, professionals around this team it's been near the bottom of the nfl and what i loved about the adam peters you know press conference as a whole was so much of what adam talked about as you know plans and so much of how adams acted how adam acted was similar to what josh harris gave us you know when he was at the podium and adam peters comes off as a very humble guy you know he talked about some of the mistakes that he's made along the way and and how he grew from it and then, you know, when you get into kind of the structure portion of it, I loved him talking about, hey, like, we're going to get a head coach in there, and then we'll start discussing and evaluating, you know, stuff on down the line. And that really mimicked what what Josh Harris was talking about with wanting to get a GM in place, and then they can start talking, you know, head coach and structure and, and all those different things. And just this organizational alignment isn't something that Washington has had since you know Joe Gibbs was a, was the coach and and they and they were winning and so I, I just it was a it was a breath of fresh air uh, having a guy with with such clout around the organization but then also for that person to be humble enough to to talk about you know needing to grow and and improve and and be better than than he has totally and I think you know he had asked some really good important questions I thought it was smart that. You know, when he talked about the timeline for a rebuild, listen, everybody hates the word rebuild if you work for that organization because you don't want to admit that it's the bottom or whatever the case is. But it, Washington went 4-13. and 13. They had no pro bowlers. They had the worst point differential in the NFL. Like, it's going to take a while here. Um, I know everybody wants to point to the Texans who drafted the QB, got a rookie head coach, and it worked. But there's there's far more – non-Texans than Texans success stories. And if you go back and look at the first two years in San Fran, they, they won 10 games the first two years he was out there. Um, I, I just – I think he was honest. He's like, I'm, there's no timetable, but I know that we're going to compete. I know that our guys are going to do it the right way. And, and I think you're just better off doing that um, because as soon as you say – I mean, think about it. Ron was lampooned for saying four to five years um, – maybe because there, there wasn't much progress on the four to five year plan, but I, I just, I thought, I thought Peters handled everything well. Um, one thing I know that we've talked about a ton on the show, and I think you can go either direction. You've made your case for Raheem Morris. Plenty of folks love Mike McDonald, the defense coordinator with the Ravens or Dan Quinn's now available, right? Like, or, or 
perhaps available. Um, but I, what I think really stood out to me, though, from Peters when he started talking about a head coach, and head coach is the next big decision here, right? It's the next shoe to drop, is he's like, I don't want to put it in a box. It's not about offense. It's not about defense. It's about leadership. And, and I tend to – I think he's telling the truth. I still think they're going offense, but I think it is about leadership. 